Hey everybody, Sarah here. So today we are going to be going over the Tequila Sunrise Morph in Corn Snakes. It is kind of a weird one because you've probably heard of like Sunrise, but it's not the same as Sunrise, it's Tequila Sunrise. Before we get started, please like and subscribe and share. You can find me on my website at sarahsnakeshop.com. I'll put that in the description. I sell corn snake books and t-shirts and obviously my actual corn snakes when I have some available will also be on that website. So if you wouldn't mind please checking that out, I'd really appreciate it. I also want to take a minute to thank all of the members of this channel. You guys have really helped keep me motivated to continue doing this and I also upload little extra videos for members every single week. So if you guys would like to become a member, you can click join under any video. It's two dollars a month and you get exclusive content. I plan on doing live videos eventually where I do like live Q&As and uh, whenever I do pick up steam on that, the members will be the only ones that have access to those lives after they are over uh, as well as some other videos that I upload here and there or like little outtakes or excerpts from long videos that didn't make it into the final cut. So thank you so much to all of the members, uh, Manasse, Jelly Dots, Melissa, Raul, uh, Black Tongue, Amy, Bridget, William, Robert, Other Amy, and April. Thank you guys so much for being members and for your continued support. I see that some of you have been doing this for two months and three months, so you guys are amazing. Thank you so much and I'm going to jump into the video now. So as I mentioned, this video is going to be about tequila sunrise corn snakes. I put a poll up on my community tab on YouTube asking you guys which ones you'd like to see and this is the one that got the most votes and I will probably just go down the list over the next few months on these three for the next few deep dives. So when it comes to the history of tequila sunrise, thankfully we have a pretty straightforward answer for the most part. We don't have the like original origin point but we do have the story of when a breeder found a snake in a pet store and decided to breed it and name it and that person is Sean Neeland of VMS. This is the perfect time to be doing this video because I just bought two corn snakes from Sean and he's also retiring so I thought that this video might be kind of a nice dedication to him and also I want to thank Ian's Vivarium for having this information up on the Tequila Sunrise page so that it's easy to access for everybody. Uh, most of the morph information is not easy to access. You have to go digging through old forums and sometimes that information is completely gone it, because the forum is gone. Uh, Ian's Vivarium original forum is now gone. The Sea Corns forum is gone. So um, a lot of these original places that we normally would have found information on corn snakes is not available anymore. But Ian's Vivarium did keep this information up for Tequila Sunrise. So thank you again to Ian's Vivarium for keeping that information. <laughs> I'm just going to read a paraphrase section of my second book. Uh, this is my copy. It's kind of beat up. I refer to it quite a lot. Uh, these are available as ebooks on my website. I have this one and then I have one that's about the actual mutations in corn snakes. But since we're talking about selectively bred morphs, this is going to be the book for that. And so I'm just going to read this to you guys so that you get an idea of the history. Uh, and keep in mind, some of this is a quote and some of it's also like paraphrasing. And this is all found on iansvivarium.com and uh, Sean Neeland was the original person to say these things. Many, many years ago, we acquired a very unusual corn from a Denver area pet shop. This animal was nicknamed the Tequila Sunrise Corn as kind of an inside joke following my inability to push the margarita pitcher to the side. <laughs> Uh, the night before. We immediately set out to try to produce more corns with this unique look uh, to determine what was causing it, but it proved to be more difficult than we thought. Obviously, part of the look was being caused by a hypotype mutation. Uh, in this case, it ends up being Ultramel. Spoiler alert, uh, I have a video on Ultramel that I did a few weeks ago that I'll link above for you guys to check out if you would like. Since that time, other mutations had been identified that caused the hypo-ish appearance, including lava, sun kiss, ultras, and other alleles, etc. Over the years and generations, we determined that the original snake must have been an ultramel annery, het for hypo and motley. But all of these failed to account for the entire look, especially the yellowing of the head and the overall speckled look. So some yet to be determined mutations are still at work here. To further the muddy waters, the original crossing to a pink pastel ghost evidently added strawberry, which I believe in this case he means red factor. Uh, Sean has a few times kind of used them interchangeably. So just keeping that in mind. Uh, as bright pink snows now frequently appear in the mix of the F2 generations and beyond. All of this was at a time before many of these mutations had been identified. Thus, sorting out back in these days proved to be the devil's own, as they say. So, after many years of trying and a thousand more offspring produced, we still don't really know what the genetics are. 
And that is still pretty much true to this day. We know that there's heavy frosting in the look of these snakes as well as really heavy yellow especially on the face and uh, on the neck and on the sides and sometimes these snakes will even have yellowing that goes all the way down their sides all the way to the tail and you can see it a little bit on the belly as well when they hatch out they really don't look any different from your typical ultramilanary or snow uh, and those are the two most common morphs of this if you see tequila sunrise lines it's most likely going to be a snow or an ultramilanary some people might add something else in there like they might add caramel or they might uh, take something away so you might just have an ultramel uh, but the most common are going to be snows and ultramilanaries because an ultramilanary was the original and so it's easy to get snows when you breed it to a snow since uh Amel and Ultra are allelic to each other. Ultramels with Amels will produce half of each, Ultramels and Amels. So when you are breeding an Ultramel anery with a snow, you get half of each. And so it's really easy to get that nice variety uh, really quickly when you are breeding these two. So those are going to be the most common mutations that we see in these tequila sunrise lines. Now, just because you might have a snow or an ultramel anery that has heavy frosting, that does not mean that you have a tequila sunrise corn. It's important to make sure that anybody who's labeling these corns actually knows that they have something from the original tequila sunrise line. Uh, it originated from this one weird looking corn snake in a pet store. And so if it doesn't have that lineage, it is not considered a tequila sunrise. So just keep that in mind when we're talking about how tequila sunrise looks and stuff like this, because uh, just because something looks a certain way doesn't mean it is a certain way. For example, we have like Okatees that are not actually descended from the Okatee hunt club. And those are ones that we would normally label like Okatee Phase. Uh, now, since Tequila Sunrise is not a locality, it is a just sort of weird looking version of a mutation. We're not going to start calling very frosted snows and ultramel anneries Tequila Sunrise Phase. That's not how it works. It is true that the original Ultras were a hybrid from a gray rat snake, at least that is the sort of main story that we're sticking to. The history of Ultra is was still up in the air for a very long time and it still kind of is a little fuzzy uh, because it was uh, Andy Barr and Mike Falcon who were working with those and um, they were also working with a lot of hybrids and integrates with corn snakes and um, they kind of said, hey, we don't know if this is a hybrid breeding or if it was a naturally caught hybrid or or what have you. Maybe it's a pure corn snake. They didn't know. Uh, but then they eventually did come out and say, yeah, it's most likely a hybrid. So taking that into consideration and knowing now that the original corn snake that was labeled Tequila Sunrise uh, was an ultramel anery, we can figure that a lot of this yellow and a lot of this weird frosting probably did come from some sort of hybridization between a corn snake and something else. Sean did say that he started selling these corn snakes in about 2003, which was right around the time that Ultra and Ultramel started becoming really popular also. So this could very well mean that Mike Falcon and Andy Barr had produced some of these hybrids uh, that had this Ultramel mutation, because obviously if it was Het from Motley and uh, Hypo and there were other things going on with it, it was probably in a breeding project and was then sent off to a pet store. So it may not have been them directly, but it could have been maybe someone who had it just secondhand who knows but uh since ultras were relatively new at the time and had just sort of started uh gaining momentum it's very likely that this snake that was found in a pet store was relatively closely related to the original hybrid and that could be why it is still so very strongly looking like a the hybrid version of this snake Around that same time, Don Soderbergh had started selling what he called frosted creamsicles. Creamsicles being the amelanistic version of the corn snake and amaroids rat snake hybrid. Uh, and they weren't actually creamsicles. They actually came from Mike Falcon and Andy Barr, who originally produced this hybrid. And so it's still, like I said, very highly possible that all of these things originated from that first breeding and then were just spread out and not really honestly sold as what they were, which was hybrids. And so the fact that all around the same time we had Ultra and Ultramel becoming popular, we had Don's frosted creamsicles that originated with Mike Falcon and Andy Barr, knowing that they were some sort of rat snake cross. And then we also had the Tequila Sunrise coming out all at the same time. Uh, it makes sense that um, all of this just originated with Mike Falcon and Andy Barr and with that original hybrid, whether it was a wild caught 
hybrid that they bred back into a corn snake or whether it was a captive bred hybrid breeding. We don't really know for sure, but regardless, we are pretty sure that there is some sort of hybrid blood and because it's so close to that hybrid breeding, that's probably why it maintained so much of that look. And since a lot of people like to keep the lines pure and they don't really outcross Tequila Sunrise too much, except for maybe with other corns that look similar, like highly frosted corns, you see that a lot in like Hurricane Motley lines and stuff like that. You could outcross into those to maintain some of that frosting and or high yellow, uh, but also get some new blood into the line as well. Uh, but a lot of people have been keeping these lines as close to pure or as close to um, the original line as possible. And so it might still be maintaining a lot more of that hybrid status compared to a lot of these other corn snake lines that are out there especially these like other Ultramel lines that are out there. I have a lot of Ultramels in my collection. Ultramel is my favorite uh, like gene combination to work with and uh, none of mine really look like that. Uh, and I think that's probably because they have been outcrossed so many times. The original snakes that Andy Barr and Mike Falcon produced, they started calling them gray snows, which makes a lot of sense when you're talking about the Ultramel Annery combination because it is genetically kind of a snow, but it is gray. And so it makes sense that they would call it gray snows. And those were some of the very first Ultramel Anneries ever to be in existence. And a lot of these other weird looking tequila sunrise frosted creamsicle looking snakes came out of that original gray snow corn snake that was produced or corn snakes that were produced. Uh, we're still not sure if it was a whole clutch of snakes or how long Mike Falcon and Andy Barr actually worked with this project before distributing it. Uh, we have no idea, really. Um, they have kind of been relatively silent on most of it. They have just sort of said, yeah, it's probably a hybrid, but we don't know how many different things could be mixed in there. We don't know how long they worked with the line anything like that. But what we do know is that all of these looks, the Frosted Cream Sickle from Don Soderbergh, which uh, came from Rich Zakowski, which came from Mike Falcon and Andy Barr, uh, these things all originated in that same place with the same hybrid labels. And so we still have to assume that these are hybrids. And since they're line bred, we have to assume that they're probably more hybrid blood in those than there is in like just your average Ultramel, Ultramel Anneries. So that pretty much does it for the actual history of Tequila Sunrise. And um, you've probably noticed I put pictures up so you guys can see them. And um, now you kind of have a better idea of what Tequila Sunrise is and uh, where it came from. The question is, are there any other gene mutations causing this? And the answer is, I have no idea. I do not work with Tequila Sunrise. It would be a really cool project to work with, especially since I already have a lot of Ultra and Ultra Mel in my collection. It's just not something that I've been able to prioritize lately. A lot of you probably know I've had some health issues and I'm still having some health issues. I've had to pause this video a hundred times to take a breath. So all that is to say, it just hasn't been a priority for me to add new projects in. However, I think that the best way to approach finding out if there's more is finding a wild caught corn snake that doesn't have any known gene mutations. Of course, if it's wild caught, there's still a minute chance that there's going to be some gene mutations. I think even a sun kissed was wild caught not that long ago, if I remember correctly. So it can happen, but getting a wild caught and breeding that with a tequila sunrise, I would personally go with a snow instead of an ultramel annery, just because then you're going to know exactly what hets are there. If you breed a, an ultramel annery to a normal, there's a 50% chance that the babies are going to be het ultra and a 50% chance that they're going to be het amel. They're definitely going to be het for one or the other, we just don't know which is which so it might just be easier to breed a tequila sunrise lion snow with a normal and then breed those offspring back together and just see what those babies look like um that's going to be your best bet to figure out how this is inherited or if there's anything special going on other than just the hybrid blood so if anybody wants to take on that project or has taken on that project, I would love to hear about it. Uh, I know that if anybody starts on it, even this year, if you have a wild caught corn snake and a tequila sunrise snow and you breed them together this year, it's still going to be three to maybe even five years before we can really see what any of that actually looks like. So uh, if you decide to do that project, I would love to hear about it. You can email me at sarahssnakeshop at gmail.com. I'll put all of my links and everything down in the description so you guys can just click instead of having to guess on how to spell my name or whatnot. 
Um, so I think that that's going to be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, like I said, like, subscribe, share, do all those things. And if you would like to support me financially a little bit, you can become a member of this channel and you can cancel it anytime. So if you only have that $2, but you don't think you're going to have $2 next month, that's perfectly fine. One is fine. Or you don't have to give any money at all. And the best thing that you can do without any financial thing is just like and comment. Uh, that will kind of boost the algorithm. I don't love doing all the algorithm stuff. I know this is all tacky and people hate it and I hate it too but uh, it is what it is if we're gonna get the word out and we're gonna educate people on corn snake morphs this is the best way to do it so thank you guys again for watching I'll see you in the next video my life has been so crazy I don't know what the next video is gonna be but I'll come up with something cool I promise it'll probably be the egg laying video because I think I have everything recorded for that now so look forward to that and I'll see you then